So hi, welcome to the Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with Fat J. Fat. And Michael of Broken Side. What's uh, up? And we're asking some questions to say about the new EP from the mud. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Thank you. Uh go ahead, Jay. I mean it's it's been really good considering, you know. All the hard work we put into it for sure paid off. So I'm happy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. A lot of people are really stoked on it. So thank you guys. And then you guys saying that. So okay, yeah. we're not liars. Yeah, no. Yeah. And uh <laughs> it's cool because like obviously, Michael, we were talking before before Jay came in, like you guys are just kinda you're coming back. And uh it's cool to see that there there are people that are, that are still interested and you you guys are embracing like the the new social medias and shit. Like I see you guys crushing it over on TikTok. So it, it's cool to see yeah. all that. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny because like on tour and just even normally, that's what we're doing anyway. Like mm-hmm. even on our old albums, we would always put skits to lead into our songs, but we've always been that way. So TikTok, we were just kind of, you know, a little late to the trend, but I think we're catching on a little. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And it's like a natural progression for you guys because you're already doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Perfect. But yeah, man. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the EP title or cover art? Yes, tons, yeah. Jay. Um, so basically, from the mud means that uh, you're building from the bottom. You're building from basically nothing. You know, like, well, le- mud meaning like dirty. You know what I mean? Like, like the rose from the concrete type thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're pretty much like starting over in a lot of ways so it, it was just sort of um just saying that we're we're still going in other words love that and then uh, the cover art on the cover art i just i drew that on my ipad and it was just sort of like um we have a um a mascot of brie like a brie head like mask yeah. and so the the cover art is sort of designed after that but but like it's the um, the the pig head is like dead and rotted and like just meaning like all the abuse and stuff that we've gone through mm-hmm. and still something beautiful came from it like the uh, the rose coming out the top you know and we're just meaning we're still here and and we're still doing it oh, which yeah. is beautiful I love, love that, that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for the CP. Yeah, uh, it was usually me and Jay, we call it uh, Sunday fun day or church because we, mm-hmm. no matter what, we show up every Sunday to do work. And at first it was like me and him just trying to do like an EDM kind of project. Mm-hmm. But then it just kind of grew into us because we naturally just sit there, listen to beats because Jay's a producer. So be like, hey, check out this new one or just on the fly, create something. And that's kind of how each song kind of happened on this EP. It was really magical. Like, mm-hmm. We were just sitting there on Sunday fun days and boom, he busts out a beat. And I was like, hey, what about this? And Jay as well, what about this? And boom, each song came out and it was really cool. Crunk Kings actually took a road trip and I was just listening, listening to Little John Heavy. So I was like, Jay, we need like a fucking crunk song. <laughs> um, Hell yeah. And so he nailed it as usual. Hell yeah. So you, you said like, originally it was like an edm project was it supposed to be like something that wasn't broken side or was yeah, it always... me and jay were working on a side thing just called fat jay and michael shea but <laughs> we put out a thing called mirage ep of how long ago jay it was like two years ago yeah. almost so, almost two years okay so yeah it was kind of like rebirthing the child two years ago subconsciously but you know, Jay left for a little while and then he came back. And like I said, this magic has been happening ever since. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, I was I always liked the um, the EDM like crossover with hip hop. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has to be done in a certain way for me to enjoy it. And so like that was that was our version of of that time, you know, like the like the broken side freaks, like that sort of um, lane or avenue. And so we were trying to somewhat like 
just feel out if people still liked that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it did pretty good. But um, we did, there was no screaming or anything in it. I hadn't, before uh, From the Mud, I hadn't screamed in like 10 years. Yeah, so, a long time. Wow. <clears throat> so like this, this fact that the screams actually sound good to me is pretty baffling. You're fat J, bro. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, stop. Like, <laughs> obviously, obviously, like it took you. It was the you hadn't screamed in like ten years. Was it kind of like riding a bike, or did it require practice for you? Um, it required a lot of practice, and like um, even even Crunk Kings, that song, the song that's out now, isn't the original one that came out because. Or, or was it go? I think it was going ghost. Actually, we did that one before Crunk Kings, and uh, my screams were terrible on it. Like oh, terrible. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah, not, so yeah had, right. But I just remember you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. They were they were terrible. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they 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 were they were terrible. So like uh, after some practice and doing more songs, more songs. It became a little bit more like a bike, I guess. Mm-hmm. But just getting to that point was was really difficult because you it, it comes from a certain part of of your throat, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and like especially the higher screams, it was really hard to relearn for sure. But you know, practice just like everything else. Practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. Sure. For sure. Uh, so I want you to to tell us your favorite lyric or moment off this EP and what it means to you. Dang. Literally, I think mine is like, I think from Going Ghost, it's a, uh, I think it's pretty much like we're coming from the mud, mm-hmm. like coming back from the mud. I, I'm so bad with my lyrics. I don't even remember them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. I, fucking left. We lost him. <laughs> <laughs> he just left. I'm sorry. Continue, please. Did, did he leave? Yeah, you just you just left. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, um, that was that was perfectly timed. <laughs> um, for me, I, it's hard to say too because, um, like, when I write, I I had seen this Lincoln Park documentary type thing, and uh, and Mike Shinoda, he was talking about his writing process, and like basically um, free writing. So like, I'll sort of write without worrying too much about what it means. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense or not. No, that makes. But sense. I like I sense. like I feel the vibe, and I feel like I I pull the words from the universe, and I don't necessarily like think like oh that that that's the one or you know what I mean mm-hmm. or like I just sort of feel it out that way, mm-hmm. but yeah. um. But in that song, Going Ghost, um, the vibe of what I was going for was really cool because basically we're talking about going ghost as in like uh, people that don't don't accept us in the industry, mm-hmm. you know, like they're, they're expecting us to die. They're expecting mm-hmm. us to go away. But here I am, like I'm still... I'm still doing this, you know what I mean? Yeah. However many, like 15 years later. And so like, I just, I thought it was cool, but it also has a double entendre because, you know, going ghost, you know, you're, you're piecing out, you're not saying anything, you're just going. So it, it sort of had a double meaning for me, but yeah, yeah the, like lyrically that song is definitely my favorite, but um, specific lyrics, I don't think I have any. Jay, you, you said that like you're when you're writing lyrics, it's not really like they're just kind of coming out. There's really like no meaning. You're just kind of like with the vibe, right? Yeah, um, so, somewhat. Okay, somewhat. so like I after, don't want to be whack either. Like, yeah, I, I, there's like there's like a obviously like a medium ground, you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like I'll I'll free write like whatever comes to mind. I'll write and then I'll go back and edit like sort of this doesn't have enough syllables or this has too many syllables or like things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So after you kind of get these words out and, and that it's made the song, do, 
do the lyrics wind up having a meaning for you or do they just kind of stick with like the vibe is kind of what you gravitate towards to be honest with you i i enjoy art that leaves it up to the interpreter Mm -hmm. so what you think the song is about is what it's about Mm -hmm. you know it's not necessarily what me the person that put it to paper thinks it's about Mm -hmm. you know that makes sense okay and michael your favorite lyric or meaning or moment moment Mm -hmm. uh favorite moment of the ep yes um dang I guess just all the laughs Jay and I have, like, because we're just always joking. And that's where, our, you know, some of our wild ideas come from is just the things we say and do. So mm-hmm. just hanging out with like good people really brings good vibes. And for me, and that's when like magic happens, especially with music. And that's what I think happened on this from the Mud EP. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of magic. And, you yeah. know, on the lyric wise, like, uh, I think like I was saying, going ghost. I said something like coming from the mud, but literally we worked so fucking hard and people don't understand how hard we have it as a group. You know, people shit on us and it really hurts us. But at the same time, like we have tons and tons of love that also supports us, which we really focus on and want to keep that the main priority. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, so where was your headspace at while you guys were writing the CP? Just fun in my opinion, just like not put pressure on ourselves. Cause you know, when we were doing what we were doing, we were putting a lot of pressure on ourselves before just, you know, business wise, people were, you know, give it, to, you know, you got to give us this, you know, contracts and labels and yeah. all that stuff. It's a little different. So now, nowadays it's all Jay does all the production. So we're not as like stressed out and, you know, crushing things out. So I think, just being free on this album has been really cool. Is the plan to kind of keep it, you know, not as high pressure as it once was and just kind of keep it fun. Like whatever happens, happens kind of thing. I think so. That's how broken side started was just having fun and not really expecting anything. And we were just always some oddball kids from the desert that just happened for people to finally listen and realize, you know, there is it's okay to be different and like you know aesthetically you know i was picked on a bull you know like all that kind of stuff and look where we are now and now it's cool it is. It. Yeah. People like, yeah that's what's funny being nerds like i was fighting the battle to be a, a nerd and now everybody's like nah I'm like, dang it <laughs> uh, so how do you guys recommend your fans to listen to this ep for the first time should they play it in the car with friends start with headphones on should they blast at a party work out to it what do you guys personally recommend what do you think car i think car. my yeah. favorite place to listen to music is in the car for sure true like I, all the mixing and everything i i sort of like catered to the car experience because I, I like when it bumps you know mm-hmm. and definitely some friends in the car with you wouldn't hurt and also like a house party would be dope you mm-hmm. know what i mean but just depending on the track for mm-hmm. sure yeah. because michael and i were not just like one trick artists like we every single song on the ep is different you mm-hmm. know what i mean it's not like the same regurgitated track over and over it's like here's a party track here's a serious track here's a sexy track you know what i mean like here's a crunk ass track like we we try to we try to um not be all over the place but show our diversity for sure absolutely yeah Uh, anything to add no i was just gonna say yeah it's just cool how i don't know like people don't really see how like what we do we put so many genres in like one product Mm -hmm. you know but like we as broken side we've always thought it was really cool to you know to not just sound like the same song like jay said yes and and it's cool that you guys are able to put like so many different types of songs and even like different genres into like a five song ep and it also like be a cohesive project and not just Mm -hmm. feel like it was five different songs that you guys were like well this kind of makes an ep i guess sick well good to know i didn't I'm glad that yeah. it, it flowed that way to you guys because we were hoping it would, but you never know as an artist. So we're glad. Thank oh, you yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. um, 
so this question should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe the cp for new listeners in three words three uh three words each no more no less okay let's get crunk <laughs> hell yeah perfect <laughs> that's great that's great dance party after party <laughs> hell yeah Dang. i right. love it i love it <laughs> Uh, so in the same vein as the last question, but not as much pressure, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this EP to invoke in your listeners? Just happiness. Just, I, we just want to be a part of people's lives. And, you know, I think that's the biggest blessing as an artist that you could hope for is like, you know, when people think of a specific time, then they they put you in that mix, you know? So yeah. if we could have anything like that, then I think it's a success. Oh yeah. Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you guys made while creating the CP? Like Michael said, just, just laughing, mm -hmm. just having a good time. We always joke with each other, you know, like, We'll, we'll make fun of each other. That's the best part of, of, you know, having a brother that you've known for so long. And, you know, um, we don't take each other so seriously or ourselves so seriously. We could just mess around and have a good time. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour. You're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What is your snack of choice? Dang. Mm -hmm. what time of day is it i usually say like <laughs> it's like 11 p.m close to midnight yeah you guys just loaded out you're getting back on the road mm -hmm. dang all okay. right i know mine's gonna be a coffee and like you know those apple or cherry pies that you pop out of the little packaging yeah yeah yeah, yeah that that'd be my little go-to or a pb and j i love Ooh. pb and j yeah that's my weakness <laughs> that's well, good. where is this gas station I usually say like <laughs> Wawa. Yeah, we're, we're, we're oh, East okay. Coast people, so mm -hmm. that's very true. You guys have a lot of options okay. at Wawa. We do, yeah. Because it's, cool. it's, I mean, it's either coffee or crack. <laughs> or both. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say sometimes both. You know? Yeah. I mix it in with my coffee. Get some crack. <laughs> no, but I, I would probably say, uh, I like the, uh, the like Keebler peanut butter and jelly cracker things oh mm -hmm. so i'd probably buy 10 11 of those and yeah, then <laughs> uh maybe a red bull depending on if i have to drive okay mm -hmm. oh i hate driving right yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i love it and i hate it mm -hmm. uh you know me too I, I love it but it's like at the same time i i fuck these long distances bro like why, yeah, why do the states exactly. have to be so big Exactly. Seriously, I just need a teleport already. Come on. Yeah, like I just want, I just need a Tesla. I need it to drive itself. So right? I can just oh fucking God. sleep. I, I would sleep so much better if I could just sleep while the car was moving. Why you drive? Exactly. Uh, no way. No way. If you if you log into the Zoom and you're like behind the wheel, bro, I'm kicking you. I've thought um, about it a couple of times, but I can't record while I'm driving. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I definitely, I would not trust that on the East Coast. Like, no. we get deer. We've hit some deer in our day, and like, mm. rest that in peace, is scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those things they will tear your shit up. Oh yeah, like, they're taking you yeah. with you, basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. And it's always so bad because like I'll I'll be going a little too fast, driving right past one, and like I won't see it until I I'm like out there. Yeah, yeah, my my passenger window is aligned with the fucking deer, and I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, like Smiling that was right there. It's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah um so on the Damn topic dudes. of food if the band was a dish what dish would the band be and why Dang. lasagna we'd be lasagna, lasagna? Sure. lasagna. there's there's no, mad layers fucking... i guess so that's true i'm thinking of food right now so i'm gonna say fucking enchiladas eh because we're spicy nice yeah mm -hmm. we're spicy I mean, lasagna that's... how about that oh enchiladas are they're they're basically a Mexican lasagna. Let's be real. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So there we go. I mean, Spicy lasagna. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's I mean that's actually that's actually a pretty fair Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh for these last couple questions, friction shift away from music if that's okay with you guys. 
Yeah, sure, sure. Six. We're actually going to go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? In and out, Angus. maybe. In and out. Okay. I might have. I, would I might go. have to get In and Out. What are you getting from In and Out, though? Right. What's your order? The quadruple burger. <laughs> the fucking whatever I can stuff in my stomach before I die. <laughs> and, and what drink are you yep. getting to wash that down? Uh, it's boring as fuck, but I would get a water probably because I don't drink soda. So fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. That's fair. Yeah. Hmm. We have these things out here called sopapillas, and we stuff them with, you know, beans and meat and stuff. So I'd get a stuffed sopapilla with probably like a lavender cider. Ooh, nice. that sounds fair. You're gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna try to go out buzzed. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Uh, so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Ooh, I'd go to like Star Wars land mm-hmm. or Nightmare Before Christmas, That's Halloween good. Town. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah, you'll see me there for sure. <laughs> we live in. You guys are going to the same place? For sure. Yes, so. All right. Love that. Uh, so, I have boys. Honor... <laughs> uh, so I have honor of asking the last question. Every single person we've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. What is your favorite color? Oh, okay. Well, I'll go first because I'm mm-hmm. bougie. No, uh, I love white, but then when people are, it's not a color. It's either purple or like uh, Tiffany blue. Nice. Ooh, I like Tiffany blue. That's a good one. Yeah, as as an artist, I I couldn't honestly say because I I love contrast. You know, I love uh, I love colors against each other. I don't mm. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but like uh, I couldn't just say purple without saying blue or mm-hmm. orange without mentioning red or you know what i mean like yeah. I, I don't know so then it just, and on. it also depends on the day like i don't know so True. I, I get it then what what's kind of like your go-to like color contrast you know like what two colors do you think work best together i don't know yeah it just depends on the piece like like i i just did this one the other day i don't know if you can Oh wow, that's, all, that's really pretty. But it's like uh, it's all cool colors, you know. Like uh, technically, like on the cool part of the um, color wheel. Mm-hmm. So, like if I was to do something in front of that, I would use like reds and pinks and stuff like that to add the contrast between the cool and warm colors. Yeah, you know. Makes so sense. yeah, I don't. I'm not sure specifically, the rainbow, but the rainbow, rainbow, like the rainbow, rainbow or polka dots. <laughs> Fair enough. Polka dots is my favorite color. <laughs> I <All> love right. <laughs> it. Perfect. Um, so as Glory said, that's all the questions you have to say. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Uh, just be sure to add Broken Side TV on our YouTube or the real Broken Side on TikTok or the real Broken Side on our IG and add us on Facebook, Broken Side, because we have have so many new things coming along the way and be sure to check out from the mud ep oh yeah and you you can find them all on brokenside13.com like literally we have everything on there so you could go there and find it all oh yeah Perfect. well thank you now this guy's been broken side and we have been the good noise podcast <laughs>